Good morning, Joe. Yeah, very, very exciting to have all these uh, uh, folks on this morning and, and, and really uh, give, getting a great view on the economy as viewed from the Federal Reserve. We're joined now by Patrick Harker, just down the road from us in Philadelphia, but sometimes it feels like, Patrick, uh, uh, far away. Um, I want to ask you, I'm going to start with the same question that I, I, I just asked Rafael Bostock, which is where do you feel we are on the road to substantial further progress when it comes to both the inflation and the employment mandates? And, and good morning, by the way. Rob, good morning, Steve. It's good to see you. I wish we were together in Jackson Hole. And God willing, we'll be able to do that next year. And I guess, Joe, I'm one of the other guys who's here joining you today. So where are we on that road? Uh, I think we're far along uh, in terms of inflation. As my colleague Raphael Bostic said a little earlier, uh, we have achieved that in the sense that we've been above 2%. We're averaging above 2%. Uh, clearly, we can talk more about that. There are some transitory factors, but there's also some evidence that they may not be so transitory, and that's a risk uh, that I'm worried about. Unemployment, I think we are moving uh, briskly toward that uh, goal, our goal. But also, I think we have to step back a little bit and look at this, and I put my engineering training <laughs> to work, and think about what is the root cause of us not achieving our unemployment goal? It's not demand. I mean, it's clearly not demand. We see that in the JOLTS data. What the problem is, it's a supply problem, a supply of labor, a supply to our supply chains of goods and material. That monetary policy cannot really affect. We can affect demand directly. That channel's clear. It's not so clear. And probably it very, it, it's not possible for us to really affect the supply constraints right now. That's what's holding us back, not uh, the lack of any accommodation from the Fed. Yeah, you know, Patrick, you jumped the gun on me a little bit there because I was going to ask a question right in that vein there by, by introducing and saying that you have spent a lot of time and, and, and focused a lot of the Philly Fed's resources on these issues of structural unemployment and, and actual programs and ideas of getting people back to work and focused on low-income mm -hmm. Americans and, and unemployment there. Um, I want to talk about that because we have... Three million people have left the workforce during this pandemic. Uh, we're 5.7 million, I believe, jobs short of where we were before the pandemic. When you think about mm -hmm. this economy returning to normal, and I'm using air quotes for people on the radio, um, uh, what, what does that look like? Do those 3 million and 5.7 million jobs come back, or is it something different? So let's go back before the pandemic. And think about where we were. We had very tight labor markets then. So this isn't just an, a pandemic-induced problem we have. This problem has been around with us for a while. It's a structural problem. There are many factors that are contributing to this. So we've got to deal with those fundamental factors. And as you said, the Philly Fed and my colleagues across the system really focus on some of the long-term solutions there that we can talk about. Um, are they all going to come back? Yeah, they're going to come back in different ways. I mean, I think the job market is changing. I think people's thinking about what a job is, whether they want to retire, all that's changing right now. It's a work in progress, and we'll just have to see how that plays out over the next couple of months and really a couple of years. Let me come back to policy. There's a lot of talk about the idea of September being the date the Fed might announce. Are you ready to say that September is your date to announcing the taper? And, and if so, when would you begin it? So I've been on record saying uh, I support tapering sooner rather than later, with one big caveat, uh, which is the Delta variant and possibly other variants uh, that are hitting the economy. And that poses a significant downside risk, I mean, to our economy. That said, I'm still supportive of moving the taper along. Why? I don't think it's doing a whole lot right now. Again, it's not a demand issue that's holding the economy back. It's a supply issue. And so I think as we move, if we can move toward tapering sooner rather than later, I, I would be very supportive of that. You know, I was looking at uh, 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 Delta or, or COVID uh, uh, cases in your region, and you have a really diverse region. You have, I guess it was that upper tier of counties along the northern strip that looked like they have intense COVID there. And then sort of the rest of the uh, parts of the state, especially the urban areas, look like some of the, the, the better outcomes. How, how are you seeing COVID 
manifest itself in the Delta variant in the data that you're looking at in your region? Well, both data and then out in talking about to business leaders, community leaders, it really does vary a lot by region, as you said. Uh, the less populated areas, like you're saying, the northern tier of, say, Pennsylvania, those counties, uh, they are less populated, but they have significant challenges. So it really varies across, uh, across our district. That said, if I take a district as a whole, we are in good shape for a very simple reason, relatively speaking, good shape. We have high vaccination rates. I mean, again, this comes down to the fact that this is a health <laughs> crisis that's causing this problem. We need to get people vaccinated. It's very simple. The correlation is almost perfect. You have high vaccination rates. You have low COVID rates. Patrick, when we think about next year, I, I guess you see or have some concerns that inflation runs into next year. How do you think about interest rates and raising rates as a potential response to higher inflation? So my view is we first should start to taper and then finish that taper before we consider uh, raising rates. I'd like to do a one-two. I think we just remove uh, the, the tapering process from the table and then look at the data as it evolves and see if it's appropriate to raise the Fed funds. Um, I, I'm not sure when that is. I'm tend to be in the camp of thinking that's late 22 or early 2023 before we have liftoff of the, the funds rate. But we really need to see how the data plays out before we make that decision.